Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And I hope everybody had a good uh, Independence Day, 4th of July. I know some wasn't so great, but praise the Lord, it's getting better. Yeah. Amen. And uh, God is good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I don't know. what Have we got any announcements tonight, Mike? Uh, yes. Um, sorry, Ken. I need to. Oh. Well, it's Wednesday night after a holiday, and uh, I know several people are still out of town. We have some are in Florida, others were in Missouri over the weekend, and Branson and other places. But praise the Lord, God is uh, always faithful. He shows up every service, so praise the Lord. The rest of them, that's just their loss, hallelujah. But okay, July 14th, which is a week from this coming Friday, will be let everybody know, uh, come be part of that. Come for 10 minutes or two hours or however long the, the meeting lasts. Well, it'll be appreciated and it'll also have an impact on the community and around the world for that matter. So Amen. Come, and, come and be part of it, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Keep the vision without vision, the people perish, Amen. praise the Lord. So looking forward to... Uh, 2020, I think a lot of visions will come to pass. 2020 vision, praise <laughs> the Lord. Hallelujah. I could, I could use some of that. I'm, I'm receiving it by faith right now, praise there the Lord. Go. Anyway, God's great, and uh, glad for everybody to be here. And uh, I'd like to take any prayer requests or testimonies that you may have at this time. Any prayer requests? Yes, Mike. Uh, James and I just praying that our son Eric can have a... Uh, All right. Remember him. Anyone else? All right. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for this, uh, uh, the police officers and everybody that was involved in this most recent shooting. A uh, young woman, for whatever reason, fired at the police and then took off running and turned into a fiasco. And we have three police officers involved, and they're all awaiting the investigation outcome. And Whoever's at fault, there's a young woman who's no longer with us and has a family, I'm sure, and friends that are, that are grieving over that loss, and we want to pray for them to be, uh, to be able to see the Lord through all of this, that God will become more real to them, and hopefully in this situation, as is often the case in tragedies, people can be drawn to the Lord in ways that they are not at other times in their lives, so we can believe for a positive impact on the uh, on this situation amen anybody else any other prayer requests praise the lord alvin testimony yes sir
Praise the Lord. Well, you know, the Spirit of the Lord works in all sorts of different ways, but sometimes it's laughing for some people, other people is weeping, other people it's just a sense of well-being and peace. But the Holy Spirit ministers to each one of us uniquely to our situation and circumstance, so you can expect that it's a kind of refreshing whenever the Holy Spirit moves, you know. It's like a, a cool breeze blows over the, you know, the the heat of the day, and you just are refreshed by it. And that's, I believe, uh, what the Lord is trying to express, you know, through those, uh, whatever you want to call them, renewals or uh, encounters with the Lord in a special way. So Amen. it's always good, praise the Lord. However he wants to do it, it's always okay with me. Amen. I prefer the laughter to the weeping, but uh, I'll take whatever he gets. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. All right, well, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer then. We have this situation uh, with a friend of James's who was in a motorcycle accident, and uh, we also want to remember uh, Dan just continued to declare his healing and wholeness uh, in, the, in the name of Jesus. Yes, and any situation you may be faced with right now, uh, let's declare the outcome, amen, yes. the victory, the positive result of the finished work of Christ, yes. amen. That's where our focus has to be, remain, because the enemy's job is to get us distracted. Get us to look at the symptoms, get us to look at the, uh, you know, the, the material things, the physical things, rather than trusting in the Spirit of God. And this, everything comes from the Spirit. Amen. Nothing here would exist if it hadn't already existed in the Spirit of God. So, amen. There's perfection there and uh, completeness, wholeness in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just declare that right now. Yes. Over every situation, over every life here every life that is connected with us, we declare the victory in Jesus' name. We declare wholeness, completeness, fullness, healing and deliverance, prosperity, financial increase and blessing in every area of their lives. Father, we just know that you are a good God. You are our Father, our Heavenly Father, closer to us, amen, than a, even a brother, amen. And we, we know, Lord, that you have nothing but good intentions for our lives. Hallelujah and a good outcome for every situation. And that's what we declare, Lord, by faith right now. We declare the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the power of God, and the anointing of God over every situation, over every circumstance, and over every individual. Lord, your word is true. It is the final word, and we declare that word right now. We rebuke the lies of the enemy. We rebuke the physical circumstances, material uh, experiences, and we declare the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be our overcomer in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we celebrate the victory right now. By faith, Lord, it is done in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, Ron. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you would come and pray over the offering and Receive it for us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is always positive. Praise the Lord. You know, even in creation, we, are, we live in, in, as, as a result of the fall. But even, even in the fallen realm that we live in, God does good things. Just think about mosquitoes. Praise the Lord. Mosquitoes make flies seem good. <laughs> right? Praise the Lord. So there's always a positive, amen, even when, even when there's negatives out there. Praise the Lord. Now I have flies buzzing me, and it just makes me feel glad that they're not mosquitoes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because at least 
They enjoy, they're just annoying me. They're not causing me to itch or anything else. So praise God. God is good. Little things. Amen. He does all things well. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's, uh, let's have the worship team come and, and uh, we'll just praise the Lord. He's worthy of all of our praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you tonight. And we do praise you, Lord. We praise you for your mighty acts, Lord, for your excellent greatness. Hallelujah, Lord. You are a mighty God, and nothing is impossible for us when we believe in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We cast every care upon you tonight, Lord, because we know that you care. We rebuke the lie of the enemy who tries to tell us we're defeated, who tries to bring depression and oppression. Praise the Lord. We rebuke the devourer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against us can prosper. And every tongue, even the lying tongue of the devil, we rebuke in Jesus' name. We have authority, and we take that authority and exercise it in the power of Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We declare the victory, Lord. It is ours in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you again for being here tonight. And hope everybody again had a, had a good holiday. And of course, now it's over. It's back, back to business as usual. And had, had we known you were going to be here, John, we would have brought a cucumber. Praise the Lord. I knew you did. You just couldn't wait to torment him. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good and hallelujah all the time. Praise the Lord. So I want to just get right to the message tonight so we don't, <coughs> excuse me, keep you late. And I want to begin in John chapter 5, and I'll read verses 19 through 23. I think a lot of what uh, God is doing in the last days is to help us come to a clearer understanding of our oneness with him and how that works out in our lives. How, th how that without that understanding, we're not going to do what we're supposed to be doing. It's hit or miss. Otherwise, it's just if I feel like I'm really anointed, I'll you know do this or do that or the other thing. And uh, the truth is we are anointed 24-7. It's good that God gives us special experiences and encounters with him. Just as like, like what Alvin was talking about earlier. And all of us have probably had those experiences where you just feel the the overwhelming realness of God. But he wants us to live our lives that way 24-7. Even when we're not feeling it, it's still the reality. It's still the truth. Amen. Our flesh, uh, you know, wants to control everything. It wants to control our minds, wants to control our spirit. And uh, the truth is, our spirit should be in charge. And the only way that can happen is if our minds are renewed to the word of God. And just because I'm wearing these old glasses doesn't mean I can't see you, Sally. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wore out two pair. Actually, I forgot them. I left them on the dresser. Luckily, I have these here. Praise the Lord. Yes, uh, five, 19. I'm sorry, Mike. John 5, 19 through 23. That's okay. Praise the Lord. John 5, verse 19 through 23. And it's all about Jesus talking about his interconnectedness with God. And, you know, every, like, again, what I was saying before is that we are, he's the firstborn of many brethren. So every, he's the prototype. And whatever he's doing, he's saying that's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Now, to look to him and say, well, yeah, that's because he's Jesus. I mean, yeah. Easy, easy to say, Jesus did this and Jesus did that. Jesus operated the same way we're supposed to operate. Exactly. After we get born again, we're like Jesus. Amen? Yep. And we keep looking to him and say, well, yeah, but he was perfect and without sin. So are you. Yes. Yes. Once you got born again, you're as sinless as Jesus. Amen. 
<laughs> wait for an amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you may not feel like it. it, it you're, you know, your natural person may not agree with that because, you know, you still kind of waver from time to time. But who you are in Christ yes. is just like Jesus. Yes. Perfect, yes. sinless, righteous, holy. Amen? And unless we get that, unless we begin to really embrace that and live from that, we're just playing church. I mean, we're just going to continue. We may do nice stuff, and we may be more moral than we were, but that isn't going to change anything. That doesn't help matters. It might make you a little bit more agreeable to be around, but it's not going to change the world. It's not going to do like Ron and I were talking about before church. Uh, the, the glory of the Lord is going to fill the earth, and somebody is going to be involved in that, and I want to be part of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, so let's go to this scripture. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man but hath committed all judgment to the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. All right, drop down to verse 30, and we'll read verses 30 through 36. And I'll just parenthetically say that that's why Paul said, when I see, look out here and I see people, all I see is Christ and him crucified. Because if we don't honor one another, we're not honoring God. Amen. That's, that puts a whole different twist on things, but that's the way it is. Jesus said, don't honor me. You're not honoring God. That's exactly right. And when we don't honor each other, we're not honoring God because you are children of God. You were created in his image. You yes. have his Holy Spirit dwelling in you and is part of you. That's who you are now. You're one with God. Okay. So I can't of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge. And my judgment is just because I don't seek my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Praise the Lord. On to 36. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. You send unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Praise the Lord. All right, last verse here to begin with, John chapter 10, verse 30. <clears throat> John 10, verse 30. I and my Father are one. Everybody say that. I and my Father are one. Praise the Lord. Okay, so... There's a word uh, we, we all know, it's, it's integrate. Think of integration, segregation. You know, when I was a kid growing up, there was segregation. Yep. And then in the 50s come integration. Segregation means to separate, mm -hmm. to divide. Integration means to bring back together, to make one, okay? So to make whole, this, I'm, I'll just give you the Webster's Dictionary uh, definition of integrate. To make whole, to renew, to complete by adding or bringing together parts to unify the whole, the sum and the total. So my purpose for saying it is that Jesus was an integrated man, the most integrated man who ever lived. He was the only man ever to be perfectly integrated with the will of God. Yes. We just read it. Amen. Amen. Now, again, let me, let me remind you as I'm going on, because I'm not going to just point it out every time, but we are the offspring of God. Yes. He was the firstborn of many brethren. We got the same thing going on. Amen. Amen. We got a thing. With the Lord, praise the Lord. we got the same thing going on that Jesus has. Yes. All right? So he was an integrated man. He was the most integrated man that had ever lived up to his time. 
when it comes to the will of God and his human reality. He lived on it. He lived just an earthly life like we live. Amen. With most of the same earthly limitations. When I say mostly, I'm just saying because he didn't have sin on him when he was born. Okay? He didn't have the initial original sin of Adam in his life. And he was subject to most of the same earthly imperfections that all of us are suffering with. All the same things that we deal with. Amen? But he also walked consciously and purposefully within the spirit realm. He was for real into the world. He dealt with all the same kind of junk that we deal with, limitations, imperfections, all of that stuff as a human being, and yet he walked in total awareness and agreement with the spirit. Praise the Lord. How many would like to do that? I'm telling you, you would change this world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the incarnation shows us that Jesus was both fully God and fully man. So it makes sense that he would walk both perfectly in the kingdom of the world that he was born into, as well as the spiritual realm. Now, our natural mind initially wants to say, well, yeah, of course, that was Jesus. But again, let me remind you, you have been born again. You have been born not of the seed of man. Your rebirth, your new birth, your real birth, Father in heaven provided the sperm and the egg, hallelujah, for you to be supernaturally born again, this perfect, sinless, holy creation. Just like Jesus. Praise the Lord. So he was able to conform to the heavenly reality the same as he did the earthly reality because that's where he came from. Right. You were born from above. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know this sounds like, you know, cliches and, and semantics, just language, but the truth is this is the reality, yes. amen, that we, we read and we don't, we don't embrace it. We don't, right. you know, get a hold of it and say, hey, that's real. That's, that's what I am. Yes. Right. We look at it on Sunday or Wednesday and go, yeah, well, that's pretty cool. And then we go right back out, and we're focused on the natural, who we are, and why we are limited. Praise the Lord. So spiritually and practically speaking, that makes, or it means really, that Jesus was perfectly aligned as a man. Everybody say as a man. Man or woman. Same, same. Amen? Amen. He was perfectly aligned as a man with the will of God. Praise God. Jesus, the man, acknowledged his reliance on God. Amen. We forget. We we cast our care upon the Lord or we we place our dependence on God when we're in a situation we can't handle. Mm -hmm. Instead of realizing God is everything. We, we have to be totally dependent on him. Yes. But because of our own sure. little bit of brain here and a little bit of, you know, muscle over here and a little bit of uh, intuition over here, whatever, sure. we just do stuff. Sure. And then when we're in a crisis, then we depend on God. Then we listen and want to hear from God. Yeah. Jesus operated totally dependent on God all the time. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's what we're. That's what we got to get to. To to stop walking in our own strength, even when we're capable. Let's depend on God. Because yes. a lot of times, and most of us know this, over the years we've done stuff because we were capable of doing it. But in hindsight, we wish we hadn't done it, even though we were able to do it. Sure. We'd have been better off to wait on God sure. and let God show us how to do it, or let God do it Himself instead of trying to get ahead of the cart in front of the horse, so to speak. Amen? Jesus got his authority from God. He wasn't just going around doing stuff because it felt good or because he thought it would look good or because he thought it might be helpful. His authority came from God. He was an integrated man. A whole man, which is what integrated means. Most of us are fractured. We are whole, but we don't Live our lives as whole people. Amen. 
He was a whole man, which means he was an unfallen man. Because everybody after the fall, everybody after Adam's original sin and Eve have been part man. They didn't have the Spirit of God operating in them. They were not living the way God intended them to live because they couldn't. Amen. We've been born again. We should live as unfallen people. Not fallen people that have been patched up and, you know, fixed up a little bit, but unfallen. Because that's how God says we are. He doesn't say you were fallen, but now you're not fallen. He says you are a new creation. You didn't exist before as far as God's concerned. Your, Your beginning is the day you were born again. That's your reality. That's who you are. That's what you are. Yes. It's, it's a discipline. It's a mind-renewing thing to, to, to make it possible for us to walk integrated. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Whole. Yes. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. See, we didn't have to do anything to get this. No, we didn't. But we've got to focus on the Lord. You, got to stay, you have to stay focused on Him in order to live this thing. Sure. Otherwise, you got, you got to die to get the benefit. Yeah. And that was not God's intention. No. No. Escaping hell is just a piece of the pie. It's not the pie. Yeah. The reward is that we live eternally. Oh. Beginning right the moment yes. we got born again, we yes. entered into eternity. The problem is we're still living as though we're not in eternity, we're still in time, yes. and we got to wait till we die to get into eternity. Mm. So we're not getting the benefits of our eternal creation, our unfallen reality, okay? So for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. How many of you still get tempted? You're still without sin. Praise the Lord. You're still without sin. So, but here's the deal. Unlike all the rest of humanity... Jesus was without sin, never had sin. And that's what unites us to him by his sacrifice, Mm -hmm. the sinless sacrifice for us so that we would have, we talked about this a few weeks back, at one moment. He made at one moment for us. He made atonement so that we could be at one with God. Amen? Look at Romans chapter 5. Uh, Verses 17 to 21. We have been made one with God. We're not trying to get there. We're we're not, there isn't anything more for us to do to get there. It's just a question of whether we're going to walk out of that reality. I've heard it said, and most of you have as well, we are not to be praying. I mentioned this just in passing Sunday uh, from need, but from victory. Under the old covenant, They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the finished work of the cross. Everything was out in front of them. So they had to pray for God to do something, and God would send the Spirit, and the Spirit would move, and then something could happen. We're praying from the victory, the finished work. So we're not praying for something. We're declaring. That's the way we pray. We pray by declaration. We pray by agreeing with God, and that honors God. And that's true faith. And it gives us access to all the promises of God. Amen? For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. What does he say? By one man's offense death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace, that's us, and the gift of righteousness, that's us, will reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Praise the Lord. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Which is just a, another way of saying what I already said. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's done for us. We're already in eternity. We are eternal beings. We are eternal creatures. 
We are spirit beings. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the means by which we are integrated. Yes. Not us. Our at one came as a result of Jesus, not as a result of anything we've done. Exactly. And that's misunderstood because most people, most Christians, treat their faith as if it meant merely our behaving in a moral way. Yeah. Just being better people. Right. Being nicer. Not cussing so much. Amen. Not getting angry. Not getting drunk. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not getting high. I'm looking right at you, John. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Because <laughs> John and I used to. Praise the Lord. We've been born again. Praise the We've been born from above, where we were trying to get all the time when we were getting high. Praise the Lord, but you couldn't get there from here. Praise the Lord. But Jesus made a, a provocative statement about this, and he, he said it, and we read it in a different context most of the time because we see Jesus as this perfection. But remember, on this earth, he was operating as a man. Yes, he was sinless, but he was, he was able to be tempted. Right? So here's what he says. Look, he, he's talking about goodness, all right? Luke chapter 18, verses 18 and 19. This is the, the little story. It's, it's true. It's an actual encounter about we call it the, the rich young rulers, how we always refer to it. Amen. But a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, he didn't answer his question. He asked him a question. Why are you calling me good? None is good save one that is God. Now, we've always said, well, kind of, he's saying, hey, hey, I'm God. That isn't what he was saying. He said, you're talking to a man here who is one with God. And I'm, I'm, I'm pointing you away from your goodness or my good works. He said, the works that I do, they're not mine. Right. It's the Father. Right. So he's pointing this guy to God. There's only one who's good. And so he's directing the man not to good deeds, but to the source, God, to goodness itself. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was operating as a man. He did good stuff, but he said, don't, don't, look, don't call me good. I'm a man. He wanted everybody to understand, I'm operating here as a human being. God is in me. God and I are one. But it's God that's doing this stuff, not me. Exactly. I'm, just, I'm just totally connected to him. I'm integrated to God. I'm one with God, like you will be. The kingdom is near you. It shall be in you. You will have this same kind of encounter, the same kind of experience, this same kind of eternal life. Yes. So... Believing the gospel is to believe that we are only made perfect by the perfection of Jesus, by having his wholeness imputed to us by grace. The only way for us to be made whole or to be integrated is through our faith in Christ. By the grace of God, we are integrated. We are made just like Jesus. We are connected to God. We are whole again. We are no longer fallen. We have been raised in newness of life. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus rose from the dead, we've been raised from being dead spirits to being alive in Christ. Integrated once again with God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. See, we just... We have to get out of this. I, I, I talked about it before. I have to remind myself of this constantly. It's, we think we've got past all of that religious baggage. But the truth is there is junk sure there is. that we don't realize is even there. And then we get in a situation and we realize, oh, there's still some stuff here. Mm -hmm. I'm still looking at things as a fallen person that's just been fixed up. And not this powerful, risen, amen, unfallen creation that is eternal, that is powerful, that has God working in them just as God was working in Jesus, just like Jesus with the same potential. With the difference between us and Jesus is Jesus was totally connected. Yes. He was totally in tune but, with his identity. Yes. And we are still functioning dysfunctionally. Sometimes we're really in, like what Alvin was saying. Sometimes we get this, this you know, complete awareness of God's presence. Yeah. And we think, 
Oh my God, this was wonderful. That's the way it's supposed to be all the time. I'm not saying we're supposed to go through our whole life, you know, just freaking out. I'm saying that should be, that awareness, that consciousness should be constant in our lives. And if it were, it would change our lives and it would change the lives of everybody that we're messing around with. And I mean that in a positive way. All the people we're interacting with would be affected the same way they were affected with Jesus. Does it mean everybody's going to love you? No, everybody didn't love Jesus either. But that's okay. You can still impact. You can still have an impact. You can still have an effect that, that we don't normally have. We do a lot of stuff we do is just us doing something good. It's not us necessarily being led by the Spirit to do exactly what God's wanting to do. Amen. So for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Praise the Lord. Praise God. If you've been through it, Jesus has been through it. You say, well, Jesus was never married, so he couldn't have been divorced. Or he, couldn't, he, he wouldn't have had to put up with my husband or my wife or my this or my that. Or he never had children, so he didn't have to deal with, uh, you know, bad behavior or the loss of a child or, or, you know what I'm saying. We think those things, but maybe Jesus hasn't been through your specific trial, but he has been through the pain of every one of these specific types of trials, no matter what they are, no matter what it is you're going through. He has experienced the pain of it. He has experienced the loss of it. He has experienced the, the anguish and the anxiety and the, all of that. If not, then this is not a true statement. Right. And then that brings the entire Bible into question. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. I'm saying this because we, we look at Jesus as this high and lifted up, and he is. But so are you. You're seated with him in heavenly places. You're just like him. You just got to believe it. You got to keep telling yourself. That's why we talk about saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Well, that gets to be, you know, just kind of like, you know, looking at flashcards. We're not really learning anything. We're just memorizing something. I mean, we're not understanding, you know, the equations. We're just understanding the, okay, here's a two, here's a two, that makes four. So we're not really learning. We're just studying for a test, like, you know what I mean? How many of you go to school and you studied for the test, right? You didn't care if you learned anything. You don't care about the test is on Friday. Monday, I don't care. I just, I just got to have the information by Friday. After Friday, doesn't matter. That's what happens to us in Christianity. We, we're like studying for a test, but we're not ever really, it's not really being integrated. We're not becoming one with this word of God, this truth of God. So be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Well, that'll shake your socks, won't it? Yeah. Be perfect, just like your Father in heaven is perfect. That's a command. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, he doesn't mean try really, really hard to be as good as God. That doesn't work. And Jesus, who, by the way, happened to be brilliant, knew that it wouldn't work. When he says, you therefore must be perfect, he means you will be made perfect. And he means you will have my perfection imputed to you. That's how you've got to be perfect. You have to be perfect. Yes, you do. But you're not going to do it. You get perfection imputed to you, amen, which means to be transferred or assigned to or imparted to you. You get it given to you. I'm saying the idea of Jesus' perfection shouldn't distance us from God. No. But it, it has because we look at him and we'll say, yeah, I mean, Jesus was perfect. That's why he did all this stuff. You are perfect. Yes, are. His perfection has been imparted to you. He said, you've got to be. You've got to be or you cannot be born again. You've got to be as perfect as God. You know, I mean, we think that's like blasphemy. But this is exactly what Jesus was saying about himself. A man, which is what freaked out all the religious people. But it's also why he was able to do the things that nobody else could do. Because he really believed it. He was connected. He was integrated with God. 
That perfection of Jesus should not distance us from God. The very motive of that perfection was to bridge that distance so we could be integrated. So that by his perfection, we would be made perfect. So that we could be integrated. So that we could be one with God. So that we could, listen to what I'm saying. We are one with God. Say, so, well, you're beating a dead horse here. Listen, I know better because if I really had this, if I get this down in me and I'm preaching to me as much as I am to anybody else, I'll be a different person. I'm not talking about being a really good person. I, I, you know, in terms of morality, I, 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 I may still have some flaws there. That's not my issue. My issue is being as good in terms of my connectedness to God, my oneness with God so that God can do what only God can do. So we'd be integrated. That's why Jesus did. That's why he was perfect. That's why he had to live the perfect life. So that we could be made perfect. So that his perfection could be imputed to us. So that we could be integrated with God. So that we could have at one with God. So Not so that we would just go to heaven. If that were the case, we'd have just gone to heaven. But so that we could all then live our lives as Christ and impact the world the way Jesus did. He only went about 30 miles from his place of birth. Uh Amen. But look what he did. We've got a very mobile society. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, if you could have the impact Jesus had, just just think about it, Mm -hmm. 30 miles from your home. Think of the lives that would be transformed. If you live this reality out just in a 30-mile radius of your own home, yeah. forgetting that you might go to Oregon, right? Forgetting that you might, you know, go to uh, Pennsylvania or to California or to wherever. Just if you stayed within literally a walking distance of your own home. Do you not know? Just think, there's been people that your life has interacted with, and it's, and it's caused them to believe and then therefore testify to the reality of God and they've touched other lives Uh if we were touching all the lives within a 30 mile radius of our homes we would turn this world upside down the same way his disciples did especially today because we have a far more mobile society than they had I mean we'll get on an airplane you can be Uh in another country across the Atlantic across the Pacific in a matter of hours Uh so praise the Lord Emmanuel, God with us. Praise God. He says that so we can draw near to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord. We have not and we will not achieve human perfection. Not in and of ourselves. He has done it for us. We are perfect. Praise the Lord. So just put that aside. You can quit working on that. Sure. All right? You quit working on that and start working on your integration with God. See, Jesus had an had a unfallen nature. So he wasn't thinking about sin all the time. He was thinking about his oneness with God all the time. And he said, those that have been redeemed should have no consciousness of sin. Why? Because the more we are conscious of sin, the less we are conscious of our connection with God. This is the battle. It isn't about, it is, the battle is not for me to be better, to be gooder. The battle is for me to be connected, for me to be focused, to be aware that Emmanuel, God is with me, that God is in me. That God and I are one. If I had that consciousness, I mean real awareness of that all the time. Well, I know one thing, it would change me. And if it changed me, it would have to change all of my relationships. Because they're all based on my self-interpretation. Okay, let me, let's say it this way. How many of you know when you're in a bad mood, you can make people mad in a hurry? It's a gift. 
Praise the Lord. But the obverse of that is when you're in a really good mood, you can affect people in a positive way. They can feel good. The same people that you can make miserable, you can make feel good. Amen. Well, that's just you know a little example of what if I'm focused on God, I can present God. I can, I can reveal God in any situation, under any circumstances, without trying. God is a spirit. We know, hey, listen, this works in the natural. Every one of us know this. Sheila, I, I know you're in and out of people's homes or have been in for years, uh, and you can feel stuff just walking into the room, right? Nobody has to say anything. Nobody has to do anything. You can just feel oppression. You can feel depression. You can feel heaviness, and you can also feel peace. Remember Jesus told his disciples when you come, he said, just leave your feet. Just give them peace and go. We can do that. We can bring that same kind of thing back in the 60s. Amen. We should say, I'm picking up good vibrations, you know, or bad vibrations. Amen. We're giving off God vibrations. And when we do, it impacts people. It affects people. But not if we're not conscious of it, because then we're sending out Nathan vibrations. <laughs> and believe me, a lot of times you don't want those vibrations. I don't want them. That's why I'm trying to get rid of them, praise the Lord. Right? Because, you know, stuff will make you depressed. Stuff will make me, uh, you know, praise the Lord. I'm not going to go into self-analysis here. We don't have enough time for that. But, but I'm just saying, we all know that. Uh, that's a fact, but it's not the truth. If we were, see, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If I'm focused on God, I can have the joy of the Lord all the time, even when I got bad stuff happening to me. Why? Because I know I'm more than a conqueror. Yes. God's not going to leave me. It's how Jesus was able to do everything he did because he was totally God conscious. Yes, amen. God aware. Integrated. Hallelujah. So, we don't have to draw, create human perfection because Jesus has already done it all for us. One more scripture and we'll wrap it up. First John, John chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. How many of you know God is love? just who he is. Herein is God made perfect. We, so that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. There's the gospel right there. In two sentences. So we can be whole. So we can be sinless. Yes. So we can be one with God. So we can be integrated. Yes. You think about the civil rights issues of the past. We've been delivered from bondage. Right? Yes. We lived a segregated life. Separate from God. Mm -hmm. Isolated. Uh, diminished. Mm -hmm. Rights not ours to, to, to experience and to, and to enjoy. We're, we, we couldn't get to him because we were segregated. But Jesus has brought integration mm -hmm. for us and God. All of our rights are restored. Yes. All of the promises are yes. ours. Yes. We are just like God. Yes. We are one with God. Hallelujah. That's emancipation like this world has never known. That's being set free. And to whom the Lord sets free are free indeed. Yes. To live in the fullness and the power and the anointing and the authority of God himself right here on this planet. As he is, so are we in this world. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now go like you are somebody. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.